G'day, or should I say good evening, and welcome to A Down Under Yarn. I am your host, Fiona, also known as Fifi Kins. You can find me as Fifi Kins on Ravelry, on Twitter, on Perk, um, on most social networks. So please come and say good day and check me out. Um, today is Sunday, the 3rd of February, uh, 2013. It is 9.05 p.m. Um, I had planned on podcasting this afternoon, recording this afternoon. However, I got um, caught up in a fantastic BKN, which I really, really enjoyed. And um, I'm really glad I did it. So it means I'm recording now. It means the lighting's not the best, but still, um, hey, the other thing is, I suppose, um, we're outside. And this is the first evening since about Monday that I have been outside um, in the evenings because it's been too hot. Now, we've lived in Cairns for 10 years, been in this house, I suppose, seven or eight, or eight years, I suppose, now. Oh, it is eight years. Um, and this would be the hottest I have known it. Um, daytime temperatures have been getting close to 100, but top that with 70, 80% humidity. I just did a check, and it may have changed, and I did convert this as well. Yep, um, it's currently 27.8 degrees, which I worked out is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but it feels like 33.8, which is about 90 degrees. The killer, though, is the humidity is 81%, so I'm not sure, I can't actually see that there. Um, today's max, it says only got up to 33, however, it felt like 36, so that's, that's the sort of things they give you. Today's max is probably one of our cooler days we've had this week, although... It's just so hard to tell because it's been horrendous. It, the heat has just been sapping. Um, I feel for those in cold climates and, and hearing people, hearing Sadie at the BKN today talking about you know, the, the minuses and the, the things. And, and you know, I joked and said, oh, we've got friends in um, PA in Saskatchewan and they say, you know, they plug their car in when they go down the street and I thought, and it's really funny and she goes well we do that here and they do that in America too and I'm thinking wow I, I just I have trouble comprehending that sort of cold um I suppose the coldest I've been in England in a winter um I've been doing them twice for visits between sort of um 26 27th of December and second I think as long as I've stayed it's been into February um but staying around that time, once I saw a bit of snow, but it didn't actually land on the ground. Other times I've been in Jersey and the Channel Islands where it's been um, too cold to snow, apparently. However, I suspect, I don't know, it's just, and the frost, all day frost, so I've experienced that. But I think the bitter coldness, the bitter cold um, that some people are experiencing at the moment is probably, you know, about what we've got here the, uh, to the other extreme. Um, that being said, I suppose I've always, when I lived down south and had seasons, I loved autumn and I loved spring um, because it was different. And Melbourne is known for having four seasons in one day. The thing I think about Melbourne is the cool change blows in and it will, the temperature will drop from 40 degrees. And it's a very clear heat. The humidity is quite low. Um, so it will drop from 40 to 23 in the space of like half an hour. Um, and I'm not used to that now. I've been down in Melbourne visiting family over January and experienced that and came away with a cold. I came away sick because of the extreme changes in temperature, which my body just wasn't used to. So anyway, that's the weather. I wasn't planning on going on about the weather. Um, the week that was, what a week. Um, I recorded last Sunday afternoon and the plan was to record and then Mimmel's bike was being repaired um, by a bike mechanic about 20 minutes away. So we were going down to pick that up. So I was going to drive him down, pick up his bike um, and he was going to ride back. And it was one of those things, he didn't have the mechanic's phone number with him and I since discovered it was under the seat of my bike because he said it was my bike as well and my bike was here, but still. Um, so we just went down there and he said, oh, he said, oh, well, we should run before you came because the, I think he'd been pumping up the tyre and the, the valve went. He says, I've got to replace it. He says, it's just a bit too hot today. Do you mind if I do it tomorrow morning? And we said, no, not a problem. We'll come back tomorrow. So we came back here and the podcast had converted and 
compressed at least. And I thought, great, I'll upload it to Amazon. So I uploaded it to Amazon. I think while I was doing that, I think I went across to the shops um, to grab a few things. And I came back and I went to, it uploaded really quickly. And I thought, hmm, I went to then um, find all the, the names and everything to put on the blog. And there was no internet. And I thought, hmm, it's a bit strange. So, hey Imogen. Image is just on his desk taking some rubbish down, which is fantastic. I'm really pleased to see her doing that. Um, we've had some words this evening, so I'm pleased to see her there. I think I've been in a bit of a bad mood and she's been in a bit of a... Anyway, so, so I got home. There was no internet. And I thought, oh, you know, sometimes our ISP drops down. So then I... Um, sorry, I'm just going to turn my phone off because someone's trying to message me on the old Facebook about a job application we're both putting in for a friend of mine and I. But there are two positions going. So actually, if we get it together, it's quite fun. Anyway, so then I thought, oh, look, I, I thought my mobile data allowance for the month um, is nowhere near used up. I'll tether my phone. No problem. Then discovered that my phone said SOS only. And I thought, that's a bit weird. So then I went inside. Do you want to come and say hello, Imogen? To my podcast. You're right. They'd like for you to say hello. Okay, she doesn't want to say hello. Sorry. Um, not like her brother who is a bit of a camera whore at the moment. Sorry, I've got hair going everywhere. Um, so anyway, so, and I thought, that's a bit weird. So I got to, onto the home phone, which is not usually plugged in because I don't use it at all. I've only got it because I need it for the internet line because I've got ADSL. So I, I picked that up and it had the beep saying I had messages on the message bank. And I always do. And it's never usually anything. And I tried to ring it. And it just said the number you've tried is not available at the moment. Please try again later. So I thought that's just really weird. Um, and it was in the middle of the flood crisis down in Bundaberg. And Bundaberg had flooded the day before. And it was looking pretty bad. And I thought lines have probably been washed out. And then I, I get some anxiety at times. And my brain does some weird things. And I'm thinking... What if they cut off our phone lines and we're getting invaded by zombies? I'm thinking, well, that'd be quite fun. But we'd been out to a work do for Mimmel um, a couple of weeks before, and the whole night everyone was planning their zombie apocalypse thing, where they'd go first. So one person was going to go to the ammo place, the other person was going to go and pick up um, Land Rovers. Someone else said, no, 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 you just need to head straight up to, um, there's a coffee farm that's all solar, and they reckon that if you had all the solar, you'd be able to um, get mobile reception. I don't know that worked how solar and mobile reception were but still I'm thinking okay and then Mimble showed up about 15 minutes later he'd gone back to his place after um, the mechanic didn't have his bike actually I think my bike must have been over there so I had to drop him back there and whatever it was um, did that and I said to him I said we've got no phones and he goes no my internet dropped out at home too and I said oh, it must be the zombie apocalypse he goes yeah or else it's um, the Asian invasion which is an old Australian joke. Um, people in the 50s and 60s used to, I think after the Second World War and even around that time, used to joke that, um, they used, oh, the awful things about the yellow peril. And, and just, you know, and I said, ha ha. And I said, look, I don't think Indonesia is going to come for Australia today. Um, but hey, let's have a look. So I went into the bedroom where I've got a radio um, plugged in next to the bed for just a, an alarm. And I turned that on and they had the flood coverage going. And it got to be, I think it was 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock news. And there was a, a brief mention that Telstra was having some issues um, with phone lines between Bundaberg and Mackay. Now, I did mean to. Let me quickly see if I can find a map. Um, and I thought, hmm, interesting. Um and they said that they were having issues with phone lines there. And I thought, Bundaberg Mackay, well, perhaps it does go all the way up here. And I thought, well, no, they'd know. Surely they'd know. Yeah. So let me just... I'm trying to... Trying to get where we are. And, yep. Here's that map. Come on. It's now loading. Anyway, so I thought, hmm, weird. And I thought, obviously, there's something wrong. 
and then cooked dinner, did those sort of things and thought there's no internet, we'll cope. Um, woke up, went to bed early because, yeah, woke up the following morning and again there was no internet. Listened to the morning news and they said that their, Telstra was aware that there were telephone problems between, again, I think they said Vandenberg and Mackay and I'm thinking, okay, so here we are. Here's a map of Queensland. Gosh, I can't tell which is which. Okay, so there we have Brisbane down here. No, sorry. It's just me being. Okay, so we've got Brisbane down the bottom there. And you can see Bundaberg is in there. That's where the major flooding was. There's been flooding in Rockhampton this week as well. Rockhampton is just south of Mackay. So between Bundaberg and Mackay, they said there was flooding. And I've just clicked on something and it's going to open something. So I'm not sure what it's going to open. The Whit Sundays. There you are. Because that's where the flooding was. So we're up the top in Cairns. So you can see right up the top there, you can see Cairns above Townsville, which is 350 k's away, not 450 k's, like I said last week. I think it just sort of, you know. Um, so we're... We're actually closer in Cairns to Port Moresby and Papua New Guinea than we are to Brisbane. Brisbane's closer to Melbourne than it is to Cairns. We're a long way from anywhere. And I was getting angry by this stage because I thought, do they realise that we don't have phone lines as well? Um, our local ABC radio, which is what I was listening to for um, updates, kept... It was being broadcast out of Brisbane that day. They didn't have any local broadcasts. I since discovered... Monday was a public holiday for Australia Day as well. I since discovered that... Um, the local some of the local broadcasters had been sent down to Rockhampton to cover the and Bundaberg to cover the situation down there and they'd been down there all week so they so there was no internet so I drove over to Crawford's because I didn't have a phone no phones um the kids were yeah Imogen hadn't arranged anything but decided she was going to tidy her bedroom nice. Jasper was just doing some painting some Warhammer figures in his bedroom so that was okay. I told them I was going over to Crawford to see what he was up to. Went over there, we went to Ken Central which is our local shopping mall, shopping centre and discovered that, I went to the Telstra shop there, they of course didn't have anything because no one was able to send them any um, emails, no one was able to contact them. They said a couple of um, newer employees had Optus phones and Optus was still um, up yeah, um, that network. However, you don't get the coverage up here for Optus, except really in the major areas. If you drive too far out of town, you lose coverage. So up here, the, the problem is that you've got to stay with Telstra. Um, and they said that Telstra was aware that it was out for the whole of the north of Queensland, that a line had been washed away. We finally, we drove, we actually rode our bikes down. Or we rode our, my bike down, Crawford Road. He wouldn't let me, he wanted me to be his mole. He wouldn't be my mole. Doesn't trust me carrying him as a pigeon, but still... Don't worry, I'm not bitter, I'm not angry. It is what it is. Um, so we went down to get his bike and of course it started raining again because it had been raining but at least when it's raining it's not as hot. And came back here and I had my phone in my pocket and I pulled it out and there was a Facebook notification and I thought, oh wow. And then it still said SOS only. <coughs> Pardon me. And I thought, hmm, a bit weird. Um, Tried the, turned the motor Mac on, nothing. Tried the iPad, nothing, and I just left it. And then came back about an hour later. By this stage, it was about 4 or 5 o'clock. It had been 24 hours. And suddenly, there was flickers of internet. Um, and I was able to get an update up on Plurk, and I think I put one on Facebook. Um, and, of course, no one had missed me. But, hey, you get that. I'll cope. <laughs> um, and did that. And then... Slowly the things came back up and then we were able to read. Apparently there are two major lines that come up. We thought one at first, I was told by the Telstra people, there was only one line um, and that line had been washed away. There are actually two lines. There's a ba one backup line. Now, in Australia, 90% of people live around the coastline. We don't have a lot of people living inland. It's mainly desert. Um, when I, oh, that's being a bit harsh. It's not mainly desert. There are towns, there are settlements inland but we find that 90% of people live within I think it's 100 kilometres or 50 kilometres of the coast 
Um, and the backup line had been washed away in some of the flood water down south. The main line had also been severed by flood water. Now, the thing I haven't been able to ascertain, and some people have said, which I don't know is true or not, the either the main line or the backup line, one of them had been damaged some time ago and hadn't been repaired. Now, Cyclone Yasi came through two years ago yesterday. That was our last major cyclone. Um, we get a cyclone watch most years. Haven't had one this year, touch wood. Um, but cyclone, and I and some people have been saying that the line hadn't been repaired from that. Whether or not that's true or false, I don't know. There's now talk of taking a third line in um, up the centre of Australia. With the National Broadband Network being rolled out, I understand that some people in Townsville on the NBN had no problems and they had internet all the way through. No, sorry, some people I know, yeah, some people around that area. However, I know others also lost internet um, through the NBN. So, again, it's difficult to know what the issue was and what's going to happen. Losing internet wasn't the main worry. We lost our emergency services call number. We lost 000911 and you couldn't use it. On Sunday evening, I have a friend um, who has three children and two of them have special needs one of whom fell over and cracked his head open. And she said both she and her husband were trying to get him to calm down to try and ascertain how bad the wound was. They said there were no phone lines. They got their mobile out and tried ringing 112, which is the universal um, number apparently for emergencies. Finally, after... I think it was about half an hour. They couldn't, they've got two other children. They didn't want to put them all in the car at nine o'clock at night to drive into the hospital. Um, and they didn't know whether, or, you know, it's one of those things where you, you're not totally certain what the issue is. When you've got a child who is um, with special needs, at times they were arcing up and it was difficult to tell. She finally got through and she got through to someone in Brisbane who it took a long time to convince them she was in Cairns. Um, they then, it was like Chinese whispers up the coast. The ambulance arrived 45 minutes later and said, yeah, you definitely need to go to hospital. We need to stitch this up. So she was able to go in with her son and then her husband was able to get her later. But she said the ambulance driver said it had been like Chinese whispers and they luckily knew the area. They, it had got through to their base that these people needed an ambulance because they were able to say, that doesn't sound right, it must be this. And they took a, pot, a chance to go there. But... To have our emergency number knocked out like that, I think, is just inexcusable. And I would hope that that is sorted. Yes, we can go without internet. We can survive without the internet. We can survive without texting our friends for 24 hours. Um, but to go without emergency calls is not on. So that's just my little soapbox. Sorry, I'm really rabbiting on here. Um, so the other thing, of course, that the flooding has done, it's got the highway. So we've had no fresh fruit and vegetables delivered, um, which is good, because it's good to see how much our supermarkets rely on bringing things in from down south. It's also interesting to see what is still there and knowing how long it's either been sitting in refrigeration in their areas. Um, I go to a couple of local fruit and veg places. They've had some stock. Um, they get a lot of stock from up in the tablelands, but this time of year there's not a lot growing. So there's potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, there's been corn, but I don't eat corn um, at the moment because it's a grain. Um, and I'm still on that, which is going really well. Just as I said, I wasn't planning on talking about that. And we've had mangoes and pineapples. And today I was able to get it, like a tray of mangoes for $15 on the side of the road, which is just fantastic. There's been plenty of watermelon. Um, there's, been, there's been enough. I was able to get some broccoli today. It didn't look the best, but it tasted okay. I was able to get some beans. Um, I blew into one of the supermarkets and their beans didn't look too bad, so I grabbed a handful of those. And I asked someone, I said, you know when the road's going to be open? They said, no. The other thing that it's stopping is our mail, um, which stops our bills, which is fine, but it stops mail going in and going out. And that, apparently, I've heard... Um, had confirmed via Twitter that Qantas is not even carrying express post mail, which is quite, um, it's, it's annoying. 
Um, but then again, it's first world wine because there are people down south that have lost everything. The, the floods have just ruined everything. Um, the people were allowed back yesterday and I don't usually watch the evening news. I make a point of not watching television news. So I haven't actually seen the um, video footage. I've seen some still photos and it's just, it's devastating. Um, but it's amazing to hear people and say, look, we had a chance to get some things up on the high ground. We've saved some things. We've been able to get important things out. It's not a bushfire. Um, a lot of people who've been through floods are thankful it's not bushfires. Because bushfires, you do literally lose everything. And sometimes you don't have a lot of warning. And um, people die, as we've found in a lot of bushfires here. Um, so then Wednesday, school went back. Tuesday I made the kids help me clean the house. We totally did the lounge room, top the tail, which they didn't like, but I told them they had to do it and they helped, um, which was quite nice because it hadn't been totally spring cleaned for a while. And the only disappointing thing was we put up all the couch covers. I actually moved the couches out and I found like four spoons and five forks and a glass stuck in the back of the couch. But I only found $1. ten, and that was a bit disappointing because usually I, I'd expect to find a bit more money, but still, hey. Um, school went back on Wednesday. Imogen is now in year 10, um, which is the third last year of school. So they started in prep. Prep 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is primary school. Jasper's in year 7, which is the last year of primary school. In um, southern states, year 7 is the first year of high school. Um, that is changing over in Queensland the year after next. So it means that Jasper um, gets to start high school in year 8. So we have high school is year 8 to year um, 12. Imogen being in year 10 though is classed as a senior um, for uniform things. So she gets to wear her senior uniform. And I took a photo of her earlier in the week, which is on my um, Twitter. It's on my Flickr actually. And she just doesn't look impressed, but that's her pulling her face. And she's really, really pleased with the photo. Go figure. Um, <clears throat> I have been doing some job applications. I had, <clears throat> pardon me, I um, had finally got my Centrelink. Now Centrelink is our social security um, dole office, I suppose. Finally got my phone interview with them Friday morning and they were a bit disappointed that it had taken so long as well. They said that I would then have to go in physically into the office to sign a form so that they can pay me some money, which would be nice um, because things are pretty tight at the moment. Um, so I went in. I've got cat fur up me. I hope the cats have been brushed and there's fur everywhere. Um, not, not they come outside, this is from inside, but sorry. I'm really babbling today. Sorry about this. Anyway, so I went into Centrelink and I got in the queue and they have someone who walks the queue and finds out what you're there for to tell you if you need to stand in line or not. And she told me, yes, I do need to stand in line to get to the front. Um, did I know my number? Yes, I know my number. It's all good. And then I counted, there were 20, about 25 people in front of me. And I thought, oh, no. So I turned around and there were 13 people behind me. And I thought, wow. So that queue moved pretty quickly because I discovered that was the queue to get a place in the major queue. Then there were people everywhere. I went and I, fortunately I found a chair. And fortunately, the person, one of the people I sat next to who was really, really talkative got called after about half an hour because I, I think I was ready to just, yeah. I didn't have my headphones with me, otherwise I would probably would have put some podcasts on or something and then miss my name being called. Um, but I was getting ready to, he, yeah, he was, anyway, um, and I started, I had um, a project with me I was about to cast on. I will get to that later, but I must get back to my Centrelink story when I get to that. So I'll have to remind myself. I've got a note down here. Um, just a minute. Just making a note. My notes today are absolute scrawl. Today, um, apart from the BKN this afternoon, this morning we had our Cairns Ravelry Group met up. We meet up on the first Sunday of the month. Um, however, I couldn't stay for very long because I'm in a group called Red Pavilion. And we are... I don't know if you'd call us a theatre group, I suppose you would call us a theatre group. We, um, once a year, last year we put on the Vagina Monologues by Eve Ensler um, around V-Day, which we put them on late February. 
and it was exceptionally well received. We did two performances. It was turn up at the door, and we thought, you know, if we get you know, 20 or 30 people, we'd be happy. And there were like 150 people each night that came along, and it, it was a lot of fun. It really was. And we got together late last year again and said, hey, what are we going to do next year for this year? And we decided we'd do a review. So we've been getting together a whole lot of monologues and songs and poems, and we've got one of our members dancing, and it's just mind-blowing to see what she's doing. Um, and I, we had another rehearsal today, so I went out for that and just laughed. And it was just wonderful. I've got a couple of really funny pieces, and I'm looking forward to they'll be recorded, and I'll probably share them with you um, after the event. So let's just move on to thanks, um, because I forgot to last week. I forgot to write it down in my show notes. I was wrapped two patterns the week before last and I meant to say thank you I was wrapped the bipartisanship socks by Megan Williams and Piper's Journey by Artie Paula Paula Meg, um, Mel keeps calling her Artie Paula so she's my Artie Paula too now from Winning Pipeline um, both of which I'm looking forward to casting on soon um, yeah so thank you for that the other thing I have to say thank you is we now have 100 members in the Ravelry group the Ravelry group for a down under yarn um, it blows me away. Um, the, the reception I've had, I just thought, you know, hey, if I get a couple of people watching me, that'd be great. And then even now I, I'm watching podcasts during the week and, um, who was it this week? Um, Sassy Pants. SPK. Sassy Pants Knitter. Um, mention me so you know little things like that that just wow send people along as of this evening we had 102 members when i last looked and i said that when we got to 100 members we'd do something special so i'm doing a bit of a giveaway now when we had our vkn last wednesday evening and yes there will be another vkn this wednesday evening for australian time um because they are a lot of fun and I will try and weed out the Australian knitters from the other knitters so that I can only send them a request. I do apologise for seeing them again last week, but I was in a hurry and I hadn't done that. Um, I was making some stitch markers and people were commenting how nice they were and I was pretty pleased because I was making them as a giveaway for this. So I have, here we are, 10 stitch markers that I made myself with glass beads, uh, hand-painted glass beads, don't know if that's going to focus very well or not. I don't think it is. But still, um, there we are. So there's 10 stitch markers there, which will go to one lucky person. I am going to open up a thread in the group. It will be open for two weeks, so it will close. Today is Thursday, so that will be the 17th, I reckon, um, that I will close it before I record that podcast and draw a lucky name. So I thought... I. I thought, you know, it's fine for people just to say, hey, we love you, you're fantastic. But, hey, I know that already. So what I was thinking was I'd like people to let me know one thing about Australia that intrigues them. Um, that's one thing I'm finding on VKNs. I suppose as an aside, things that I just take for granted that I, I, I just forget that other people wouldn't understand. So, for instance, two things. One, someone said, oh, you live close to the beach. I said, yeah, but we can't swim at the beach. And I just thought, oh, yeah, of course, people probably don't understand. It's stinger season. We have um, jellyfish, box jellyfish and irukandji jellyfish um, that will sting you. So beach swimming is not advisable. You, There are some stinger nets at some beaches that are also patrolled by surf lifesavers. However, um, irukandji can still get through the nets. And you can wear nylon stockings and long sleeve tops and things like that I to be honest would rather go swimming in a pool or just sit under the air conditioning and knit. that's just me in winter though it's a different story and it's just beautiful and lovely so I will take you to the beach um, in a few months time there's Max he's upset that was it's actually very opportune um, our cats are inside cats they're ragdoll cats so as soon as they face danger they just go to jelly anyway and our boys do that um, one of the dangers, big dangers we have here are pythons. We haven't seen one in our yard, um, although people around Cairns find pythons in their yard, usually with a large bulge in their belly, unable to get under the fence again. 
and that's usually a family pet. Um, so one of the reasons I don't like cats being out is because of the pythons. I have seen um, a snake in the backyard and yes I screamed and ran because I can't stand snakes um, and it was probably a taipan um, which is pretty deadly but it, I, I know it was more scared of me than I was of it but I still and that was I suppose it was seven years ago that I saw it and I still won't go near that garden bed and garden even when I'm mowing the lawn I will push the mower up there and stand back so yeah I don't really like snakes um, and I say it was a taipan everyone else says it was probably just a little tiny green tree snake or something that was pretty harmless and I just don't want to know if it was harmless or not because it was a snake um so yes yeah, so stitch markers oh <laughs> sorry they um that thread will go up um for two weeks and please one entry per person and there's more than one thing that intrigues you about Australia or Australians you can put anything down and if there's anything interesting that needs to be um addressed i can do that in the podcast in the upcoming weeks it'll give me some more content now oh my gosh it's 31 minutes and i haven't even got to knitting <sighs> which is probably good because i don't actually have any finished objects i was going to show a finished ob object from the past which i won't i'll leave that in for another time because i've just babbled um but i do have some whips i have which bag this bag first um this is just a I call it my sock monkey bag. I got it at the craft show, the, the Christmas craft fair we had in town last year. It was advertised as a ballet shoe bag. Hey, I took it. It's actually quite soft cotton. However, the um, that is has been stitched on. That's another fabric. And that, I'm not sure if it is just, I don't think it has any interfacing on it. I thought it did at one stage. I think it's just thicker um, patchwork fabric that someone has put on there. So... Um, there is that. So last week I showed you the Die Erste Shawl, which is Anansi. I think I called her Anansi last week. I'm so sorry. Meltran Designs. Go and check it out. It's a knit along with um, Fibre Nymph Dye Works. I am knitting this on 4mm needles and they are US, US 6. I can't read. I need to have my eyes checked again. I know that. Um, I've got down I've got down a great way I've done quite a bit on this however I got stuck the other night and put it to one side so you can see I think I um, done down I think I done two or three repeats last time I've done eight and a half I know what I'm exactly where I'm up to now and uh, I think you can do nine repeats and then the final border um, I still have 50 grams of yarn left. Now that is enough to do another one of Anansi's patterns of Mel's patterns um, which I could do because this shawl is actually going to my mother-in-law in South Africa and then I could keep the hat and it's really nice colours. As someone said today, tonight on the VKN, it's really Australian colours. It's the green and the gold. It's actually a pretty good representation there. So it's green gold with some blue through there. Um, I, they're also springbok colours. So, yeah, um, I've had a couple of times where I've been out and it's just lack of counting. As soon as I go back, I can see exactly where it is. Um, the rows are getting longer, which does... Um, slow me down a bit um, but that is sort of on hold sort of I'll get to that in a minute um, so I was whoops I've just I've got my water bottle down there and it's just gone in the corner because I've filled up with ice oh, pardon me so that is that one um, I was doing that on Wednesday evening in the VKN and noticed I was out and couldn't work out why, so I thought, bag of this. And then I was sitting there, I was fidgeting because I wasn't knitting, and I thought, oh, I'll cast on some socks. My sock needles are empty. So I went and grabbed my Yarn vs. Zombies. This is the Time and Space colorway, I believe, which is a Doctor Who-inspired colorway. You can see it's got sparkles through it. Um, it's not a very good color representation. The blue is um, quite different. And I did... Just let me get this right. And I, I did, I think, most of the cuff um, during the big hand. And I just, um, all I did for the cuff was cast on where the yarn came out, which I kept meaning to ask Kiki if she does cut it off at a new colour change or if not, 
because I'll need that for the second sock. But anyway, um, I was going to do them toe up, but then I thought I'm not going to look up how to do Judy's Magic Cast On, which I don't have down pat yet in the middle of a VKN um, and have a YouTube video playing in the background. So I just did top down. And um, as soon as I got to the end of that stripe there, I've just gone into stockinette. Now, this would have been really good in the Centrelink office. However, I was knitting some on Thursday evening. Um, I had a PT session at the gym, but Imogen decided she had to go before that, but she had to go to Shazam, I think it was. And I knew that if, I'd, if I went through a Shazam class, or even if I um, stood on the treadmill and walked for 45 minutes, it would be difficult for me to get through my session later on. So I said, look, I have to be there while she's in the gym because she's underage. So I went and they're fine with me sitting in the corner knitting. So I was doing that. And just as I um, got, to, I think I must have, whatever I was, I'd, I'd, I'd done, I think I got to one and a half bits of colour. So I got to the other bit, just as I was down that, I was pulling the needle through and there we go. You can see it came totally away from in there. Which is disappointing. These are my high high sharps, um, my 2.5 millimeter US 1.5s. Um, they're my favourite sock needles. I'm, I think for socks I'm a fairly tight knitter, and I think on metal needles I'm I'm quite a tight knitter. Um, I'm not as tight on wooden needles, which is something I noticed um, recently. So we don't have any local yarn shops. We have two craft shops. I could have gone and bought. I, had to, I thought I had two options. I had, I've actually got my 2.25 millimeter needles uh, in, they're in another sock that I'm actually just need to go back one repeat and, and do that and I'm, and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm, I'm gonna leave them there and I thought, I could go and buy some El Cheapo. Here we go, here's one, here's an example. Um, I can't even think what they're called now. They're, they're Indian, they're sort of metal. But oh, there you can see the cable. It just it does everything, and it drives me around the bend. I've been using this for my um, um, my shawl with lots of colours, Aranami shawl. So that's the word I'm looking for, and it drives me around the bend. I do now have another 2.75 millimetre needle, which I am going to use instead of these. Um, so I, do, I I wasn't keen on going off to buy one of these. I the joins are really bad. These have been fine for the shawl because even though the, the cable gets in the way, you've got enough stitches on there, you're not having a, um, sorry, I used one of these a couple of weeks ago for a hat. I quickly had to race down and buy one because I didn't, couldn't find that size. And lo and behold, it was just, it was awful. I couldn't get the stitches over there. So I thought there's no way I'm doing that for magic looping socks. I could not find my DPNs and I thought besides that, I don't mind using DPNs, but I'd much rather magic loop when I'm just doing an afterthought heel sock. It's so much easier. So before, this was then on Thursday evening. So I, I looked around and what was available in Australia. The only place that has higher, higher sharps is out of stock of the 2.5 millimeters. So I thought I could go, people would talk about the chow goos. So the place that stocks chow goos doesn't have any in stock. There was another place, but I think that was a place that had um, it, it had flat rate shipping, which was twelve dollars. And I thought I'm ordering a set of needles for six dollars, and that can actually fit inside an envelope and be posted to me as regular mail. I'm not going to be paying twelve dollars for knowing when that's what the shop owner could be doing. So I thought. So I went to, I suppose, what I class as my local yarn shop, which is Tangled Yarns, which is down in Brisbane, which is you know, 70,000 kilometres away, and um, ordered online. So they have Addies, so I ordered some Addy, whatever of the Addy metal ones are. They also have Knit Pro, which are the Knit Picks needles. I ordered a metal one, a Nova, and also a wooden one, just to try them out. So I also have three pairs of needles, so I can have three pairs of socks on the needles at once, um, which I promise I won't do. I ordered them and paid for express post, which was $12, and then got notification on Friday. That was when I discovered that express post wasn't even getting through. So someone I know on one of the um, Australian boards said that they work 
um, for a courier company and had been told that Qantas said Tuesday was when they'd start carrying express clothes. So I'm not sure when I'm going to get those needles and when I'll be able to do anything else on those socks. Um, so while I was in Centrelink office, I'd already planned to do a knit along with Megan of Stock and Knit Zombies and Kiki of Yarn vs Zombies. We were going to knit the whip. Well, we are knitting the whip wheel. Um, we have now also um, had join in. Sorry, I've just forgotten. My mind's just my mind's just knitting. Amy K has joined in as well. Um, my mind's like jelly tonight. I don't know what it is. I think it's the heat. It's just melting me and it's melting my brain and I'm just not thinking straight. So I had it with me because we were meant to be um, casting on together over a VKN at I think 12 o'clock my time on Friday. So when I got to Central Inc. and they told me that, that there was a long wait, I sat down and person who was very talkative who I had to sit next to for half an hour was telling me he'd been there for an hour and a half and I'm thinking oh this is a long wait and I got there by I think about 10 30. I was out of there at 12 30 and about 10 minutes of that was seeing someone for me to say yes I understand I have to look for seven jobs a fortnight here let me sign the form um yes all these details are correct I'm not a doll bludger I'm not um trying to do that so I had with me my supplies for casting on the whippoorwill because I was my plan was to go from there over to Mimmel's place because he's got a, a small unit and in his lounge room I can switch the air conditioning on use his internet use his air conditioning it's a small place so it doesn't cost as much to cool down whereas I've got an open um, house here and the air conditioning costs more and he was fine with that and I knew that so I had it all with me and I thought I can't just sit here and do nothing, especially with this person next to me rabbiting on. I'll start knitting. So I cast on my whipper wheel. Now, this is how far I've gone. I probably should hold it up the right side, yeah. Up that way. It really, it, I'm in the boring bit, which is fine by me at the moment. Um, I have seven rows to go until I do another increased row and I think that's my last increased row and then I keep um, knitting for a few more rows and I end up with four or five hundred stitches and then go on to the next bit. As Megan says we've been tweeting a lot we've got a hashtag on Twitter called um, Whipple Willing so if you wanted to go there and have a look what's happening. Um, I'm using a new yarn to me and one of the reasons I'm using this I actually bought this a good 18 months ago to do this shawl in um, from Susie House Frau, which is an online yarn, yarn um, distributor in Australia. And a friend from the Cairns Ravelers Group had been using this yarn. And she said, oh, someone told me about it and it's just so scratchy and it's so harsh. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use it. I went and bought it. They say that it blocks nicely. I don't know if I believe them. Um, and she said, if you look at the comments online, it's all pretty much the same. So it is the Holst yarn, Holstgarn, which is a Danish yarn. Um, this is the Marlin colorway. They come in 50 gram balls. So I've got two balls. This one here, Max um, decided to bunny kick it. So it's got quite a few scratches down it. He just loves yarn balls. I just saw in the photo last week. Um, so I'm using this color for the main color, which is Marlin. And I'm using this colour here, which is Pussy Willow, which is sort of a lightish green. It's just hard to tell. It's sort of a, a beigey, lightish green for the accent colour. Now, the best thing about this is that because it is um, a, 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 I suppose, a firm yarn um, and it's not soft, it's great for knitting in, in this climate. I'm really surprised. And I got up with Heather again this morning at our Ravelry group and I showed her and I said, I don't know if I'm convinced I'm feeling this fabric and it's not feeling very soft. And she said, no, believe me, you soak it, it blooms. She said, I didn't know how it could the first time I did it, but it did. Um, so I've, I've heard other people, I'm hoping it does because it would be really good. Again, I'm using four millimetre needles, um, which is whatever I said they were before, six, I think. So I'm using my Knit Pros, my Knit Picks in the Nova metal ones. Um, I went to look for my wooden ones and they are on another project that I've forgotten that I hadn't finished. And I thought, no, I'm going to leave them there and use these because I had these ones. 
they're actually really quite nice to use. So I'd forgotten how nice they were. I'd forgotten how nice I, I actually really like the Knit Pros. I'm using the on the Anansi, I am using my Addy Long Lace, which again I really like and I quite like it for that. Um, but I think for circular knitting especially, I do like my Knit Pros, but still. Um, so yeah, so I think, I, I know I mentioned last week, this shawl, one of the reasons, I, apart from having the knit along, that I wanted to cast it on is it's for my aunt. Um, my uncle died couple of weeks ago now um, and we found out at Christmas that he'd just been diagnosed with liver cancer and they had to go they're in Jersey in the Channel Islands and they were told they'd have to go across to the mainland to see a specialist and they were doing that straight after Christmas and they did that and the specialist said look it's a really good prognosis for the type of cancer you've got however you have lost a bit of weight we need you to put on some weight before we can start treatment and they said do you think in the next month or so you'd be able to put on some weight and they said that shouldn't be a problem they worked things out, came back to Jersey and he developed a cough and that they then, then discovered was secondaries in the lungs which then spread to the bones and in the end, hey, he, I think it was less than a month after Christmas that he died and his sister-in-law, um, his brother's wife, had cancer and, and for, I know a lot of people have been, have had family members who've died from cancer and it's gone on for years and apparently her cancer went on for years and it, and it was rough on the whole family. I don't think any cancer's good. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I've been trying to ring my aunt a number of times this week and with the time differences, I've just never been able to catch her. So again, after I've finished recording this, I'm going to try calling her again because they didn't have children. Um, they had battled infertility, which is something I can identify with um, because I battled infertility for five years um, after we were married we started, basically started tr trying to have children straight away and I needed treatment I don't ovulate by myself very regularly and um, so I needed ovulation induction treatment I have PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome which they're talking about changing the name of again um, basically a hormonal imbalance which means that I have lots of little tiny follicles on my ovaries but that's from the follicle stimulating hormone getting really revved up and going yeah let's get some follicles going and then getting to a stage where the other hormone the luteinizing hormone comes in and goes no nah, I'm not going to do that so none of them ever get to maturity and it's very rare that they get to release um, that's my story and I went through a number of cycles, um, which was not, it, it's not an experience I look back on with fondness, but it is an experience that has made me part of the person I am. And I was reflecting on it a few weeks ago, even before my uncle died, and I, I was, someone had said to me, it'd be good to have a knit along. One of my friends had said, you know, we need to have a knit along in the group, you know, podcasts have knit alongs. And I, I, I thought, yeah, maybe at some stage. And then it dawned on me that a colleague I used to work with um, was pregnant last year and had a stillbirth. Her baby died in the womb, um, I think about 33, 34 weeks. And she had to deliver her baby, um, who was born sleeping. And it's been rough on her and following her on Facebook and seeing what she's going through. And... You know, she puts the most heartfelt status updates up and all I want to do is give her a hug. And I thought, we're coming up to Mother's Day in May and when I was going through fertility treatment and even after Imogen was born and then when she was 12 months old I went back again for another six cycles and finally conceived Jasper who was born, was it, um, three years less, four days before Imogen. Imogen oh, she, he was born four days before Imogen's third birthday. Um... And I was, and I was thinking. Even after that, I didn't like Mother's Day. I, I didn't like the, the way that um, the, it's not the commercialisation. It was the way that mothers were just put on a pedestal, and I wasn't part of that club. Um, I wasn't able to experience that, and it was through friends giving me hugs and helping me, um, and and saying to me that, you know look your own mother which I, I tried to do um, I don't have any grandmothers I wasn't able to look to them um, and and that helped me 
but it still wasn't the same when all I wanted to do was be a mum and I couldn't be at the time. Mother's Day was really hard and I'm looking at my friend now who whose baby was born sleeping last year and I suppose I'm looking ahead knowing that she's going to get to that day and it's going to be a really bittersweet day for her. She's a mum but she's a mum to a baby who is not living. Um, and I know that there are a lot of people around there who've been through similar things. People who have had miscarriages, people who have not had experiences of motherhood that other people would like. One of my very, very close friends, her children don't live with her because that's what the courts have deemed. And it's, it's heartbreaking to see what she goes through. And I know for her, Mother's Day is really hard as well. So part of me knitting this, and I'm calling it, um, uh, an, I'm knitting a hug for my aunt. Um, because she doesn't have children and she doesn't have anyone there to look after her and I just want to give her a hug and I can't because I'm all the way over here. I thought in March and April we would knit hugs and knit a shawl or knit something that someone can wrap around themselves and I, I think most of us would probably know someone who would benefit from a hug around May. And I think the idea is to be able to gift it to someone either late April, early May and say, hey, I'm thinking of you. I know that this time of year is particularly hard and I want you to know that even if I can't be with you, I want this to be a symbol of a hug, of me giving you a hug and recognising how difficult this time is. Now, I'm not expecting people to knit huge lace shawls, lace weight shawls. Um, last year I knit 198 yards of happiness, I think, the shawl is and I knit that in a few nights and on worsted weight so one skein of um, worsted weight so I, I was thinking that most of us would probably know someone and if we don't know anyone there is always the um, we have sands here sudden and neonatal um, death support um, there's a sands group the local sands group you could say to them hey I've just knit a shawl that I want to go to someone for whom Mother's Day is going to be particularly difficult. There might also be perhaps a fertility clinic or something in your area that you might be able to say, hey, here's a hug. So I suppose part of this is raising awareness and raising awareness that sometimes um, there are people that for whom holidays are particularly difficult. And I think for women, Mother's Day is one of them. So that's one I've chosen to focus on. And I'll be putting a thread up in the group with some information. So. That's just my thoughts. Hey, you don't have to run with it. Um, I'll be needing a, a scarf or a shawl um, for my colleague I used to work with. She's definitely getting something to say to her, hey, I know you probably won't use this in this climate, um, but still it's a hug and it's a symbol of me thinking of you and knowing how difficult May is going to be. So, yeah, there we go. Um, I don't actually have any acquisitions this week because we've had no mail. Not that I'm really expecting very much, although I may have been a little bit naughty. My mother gave me some money for Christmas and whilst I should have been using it to pay bills, I may have just let a couple of things slip into a shopping cart a couple of times this week. Anyway, and of course I had the needles that I ordered. Um, but I thought acquisitions aren't just what I get in the mail aren't just what I get when I go to Spotlight or go to Ken's Craft Store or anything like that. Acquisitions I've had this week have been from the VKNs. Um, it's been the knowledge and the laughter and the fun of talking with people. If you haven't done a VKN before, as soon as you find one announced, come and join in. It's so much fun meeting people from all around the world. We had people from Europe, America, Australia and New Zealand this afternoon all chatting. It was just fantastic. Just laughing, talking away. Um, so my acquisitions are the VKNs, are the knowledge, the laughter and the fun and the sense of community that they help create. So please try and join in. Um, this week I am helping a friend tomorrow. She has some filing she needs doing. I said, hey, if you do that, I'll help you get your nails filled. And I said, yeah, I can do that because my nails, I desperately need them done. Um, so that's sort of the way we're doing that. I'm really excited on Tuesday. Um, 
when Jasper was born, I became involved in the Australian Breastfeeding Association. So that's now almost 12 years ago. Um, and I don't usually get to go to meetings anymore, but they've got a meeting on Tuesday and I can go to it. So that's really exciting that even though I'm not working, there are things that I can do. Um, I've got lots of more job applications to do. And I also hope to update the blog a bit. I keep meaning to put a list of podcasts um, that people might like to think about checking out them site. So I will do that. Um, and my about me and things like that that I haven't done. This has gone on so much longer than I anticipated. I, when I started writing my show notes this afternoon, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to get 20 minutes max because I've done no knitting. But I've just babbled. So apologies for that. Thank you for staying on for so long. Um, I hope next week won't be as long. I hope next week I'll have at least one finished object for you. And take care. Uru. Cheers. Bye.